Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the DX Gamer Show. My name is Mike, aka Operation DX, and welcome to episode 25, where we continue our quest to build a successful space program. All right, so during the previous episode, we picked up some contracts, and actually in the comments, it was suggested that I pick up the build a base around Minmus because I can confuse the system but I don't really know how to confuse the system but I have I have some plans though so it's gonna be okay it's gonna be all good all right so I am returning to Minmus station why why am I doing this well because I want to take my two best scientists on the biggest mission that's pretty much going to happen in this series. But I also want to get all the available data and science that they can collect while they're here. So we're not going to launch a mission for a couple years, but uh, don't worry, that's not going to be too long from now. So I discovered that there is a limited amount of data and eventually you will get no more data around Minmus. But one of the best tools that I have available to me on this particular station is the gravitational scanner. It pretty much, as you fly over Minmus, will pick up each different biome as I speed up time. So you can see that I'm just speeding up time a little bit at checking, speeding up time, checking, and I'm getting a freaking truck ton of data which means that my scientists are going to produce more data per day and depending on how full I get that data marker I can get a lot of science a ridiculous amount and I recall when I said when you know I was concerned that oh this lab it's not really going to be of much use because I'm doing other missions blah 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 I was dead wrong this thing can generate so much science it's stupid it is and it's almost OP, honestly. Okay, so essentially I'm going to be generating around 2,000 plus science just around Minmus, just with this lab, just using the gravitational data that I pick up from each biome. It is insane. I can't believe it. I have a question for the commenter that said that I could trick the system and have it complete the contract to say that I have a station around Minmus without actually setting up another station. Uh, I'm not sure. I tried a couple things, nothing worked. Um, like undocking and redocking. But again, it doesn't matter. You'll see in very, very near future. Anyways, this craft here was something that was actually talked about in another comment. They're like, why did you waste that fuel tank? It was perfectly good. You know, why'd you do that? Well, technically I didn't waste this fuel tank. It had a, a probe core on it. And it's been hanging out in the same orbit as Minmus Station. And it's starting to annoy me a little bit and I have a little concern. I know when you accelerate time, like everything doesn't necessarily get calculated, but I do have a concern that eventually uh, this will meet up with the station once again and possibly bump into it. Uh, it probably wouldn't do much damage because they're heading about the same speed but it still could break a solar panel. So I don't want that to happen. So what I decided to do is for now, go ahead and park this thing on Minmus. And I was actually kind of surprised that that thing was able to balance on its thruster. Anyway, now I am accelerating time to essentially collect that science. I forgot to start the science though. Another note is you can't actually be selected on the space station or this won't work. Uh, for some reason, it's not calculated if you just speed up time while you're selected on the space station. Yeah, that's kind of weird. So what I'm doing here is I'm selecting on one of my satellites, speeding up time, selecting, switching back to the space station, looking at the science, counting off the days, um, guessing relatively when that 500 science is going to fill up, transmitting the data back to Kerbin, and getting a truck ton of science, preparing for the future mission. And yep, pretty much just, uh, you know, just selecting Mimis. You can see that I have markers on Mimis. I honestly wish that I did not pick up that contract. I was relatively tempted to abandon the contract that uh, 
I had to go around and do all the gravitational scanning. I think I just got a little contract approval happy there and saw min miss min miss min miss oh i can do that i can do that i can do that kind of thing it's kind of like that uh go for it mentality which was another thing that was talked about in the comments like dx you know you just you just do it man you just do it i want to do that you know kind of thing and you should go for it you know don't hold yourself back like play the game if, if you want to go to duna go to duna if you want to go to jewel go to jewel you know just like in the series i want to go to eve i did that so uh, I didn't really care what the contracts did or sent me to. And oops, I forgot to cut that part out. Usually I cut that uh, loading screen out. I apologize. Anyways, hey, I'm finally using the button. You know, I was kind of saying uh, old habits die hard kind of thing. Uh, I clicked on the button for the next morning instead of uh, manually speeding up time for my uh, myself. But look at that. See how ridiculous that is? I have 2,300 science just from that lab sitting up in orbit, collecting gravitational data and processing it into science. So what I'm going to do is I've kind of been wanting that uh, medium-sized probe core. That is because I want everyone to be able to fly, craft, and use all the special stuff. Unless you're a high-level pilot, you can't do some of the really cool like autopilot features like select the maneuver node or you know radial anti-radial all that i think that's super awesome and i want that so that's one of the things i grabbed and i'm also kind of preparing to do a uh, space plane of some sort uh, so this will probably take place after this mission now this mission is most likely going to wrap up the tech tree. But as many of you have expressed, please don't end the series when you finish the tech tree. So we will continue on for a little while. Perhaps I will continue doing the fuel network. But I kind of came up with a different idea. And here is my different idea. So this, is, this craft is crazy, right? Right now it has 254 parts. The limit in this VAB is 255 parts, and I just added the 255 part limit right there. And this craft, <laughs> there you go, see? It is ridiculous, all right? So this thing has absolutely everything I would ever need. It is like a super version of the craft I built in my point two two series. This thing is my interplanetary vehicle. Uh, I named it the goddess, you know, goddess. Now, that makes me think of the goddess game, which I don't really like. I didn't think it was a, I don't know, like that game kind of disappointed me because I liked black and white, honestly. Black and white was like, I loved you know, Peter Molyneux's version, like, of that, but, like, the dude overpromises everything. Well, not gonna, no. Okay, anyways, so this craft is ridiculous, and now we are, we, sorry, I sidetracked, I always do that. We are going to launch this thing up into orbit. This thing is an absolute beast, and I had to do a lot of things. I had to add some extra thrusters. I had to empty every tank in the top of this craft. But what I did do, actually, is I loaded the center ore tank with ore so that when this thing gets into the orbit of Kerbin, I can fill up my tanks, which it's not so bad because the outer side tanks only need liquid fuel. They don't need oxidizer, so it doesn't uh, burn... Well, you get more. You bang for the buck, per se. And, you know, you don't get, uh, you know, it doesn't cost as much. So this craft is going to be pretty efficient. Okay. So you may be noticing there's a whole bunch of, oh, yeah, I ran into an aerodynamics issue here. See? Like, I suffer from it, too. I actually, I get a lot of comments all the time, like, how are you not having problems with your rockets? Every time I launch a rocket, I spin out of control. Yeah, it's it happens to me, too. But I've got those fins in the back, and they saved my craft from doing that spin, which really, really helps. But anyways, back to this craft. So... On the sides, you notice that there are drills, and they're little craft that detach from this vehicle, and they're meant to go on smaller bodies. They can't obviously do Kerman because they wouldn't be able to return. Uh, probably couldn't do Eve. It wouldn't be able to return. However, 
they can go on moons and mine the resources. It also has a resource scanner and all the equipment I need to find the resources on planets. And then I can refuel the tank. So this craft is self-sufficient and if managed properly can perpetually fly uh, indefinitely around, do anything I need it to do. It can do every mission that I get in the uh, contracts, except for the fairy kerbals up into orbit, essentially, te or test this, that, but it can do like all the major stuff, explore, you know, explore this planet, explore this moon, whatever. So this is also another permanent fixture. What's also cool about this craft is because of the way it's set up and it's got so much gear, this is essentially how I'm going to complete the Minmus station contract. So the first thing I'm going to do is fly this over to Minmus and I'm going to dock her up with the space station. And I'm just going to save a little bit on the craft. I'm going to, you know, transfer some ore over to it, uh, transfer some fuel over to it, and get it ready for some big missions. Because we did pick up a contract to fly over to Jewel and Bop. And this thing is more than sufficient to do those missions. But I also picked up a mission to fly over to Duna, more specifically Ike, and uh, return from there back to Kerbin, but what I'm actually going to do is a kind of like planetary tour. So we're going to fly over to Duna, and then we're going to uh, probably scan for resources. We're going to fly to Ike, scan for resources, and then um, I might, <clears throat> depending on how my fuel system or situation is when I get there, uh, land on a craft and uh, maybe mine some ore. And then I'm going to head over to Jewel. And then uh, to pop, land down a bop, and do the scientific thing, and get the science data around Jewel. So that is the plan. It is a huge mission for a craft that is essentially um, another one of those untested things. But I have faith that this super version of my older craft, because I built it on the same philosophy, can in fact do all of these things. The only thing is the uh, the ore ratio. As long as, you know, it maintains whatever, I am so good to go. Now, there's a couple other things that I could technically do, but I think they're kind of wasteful. I could, in fact, use the ISRU unit to keep refilling the uh, mainsail in the back there. Or I could do the same thing with that ener uh, the uh, engine on the back of this craft as well. I could... Uh, just keep filling the, the tank up, even though the docking port, or not docking port, the, um, ah, I forget what it's called. <laughs> the clamp that releases the engine. That is not supposed to be able to transfer fuel, but for some reason the ISR unit is uh, craft wide. So it can, in fact, fill that back up. And I could have the extra engine, but I don't want to do that because... I have a large docking port on the back of this craft. And I figured using the large docking port to dock to Minmus Station would be better than trying to use the smaller docking par part. <laughs> I can't talk, as usual. Uh, yeah, so it would be better to use the large docking port because, you know, my, my docking alignments haven't been perfect. And I've kind of been relying on the magnetic capability of the docking ports. And because all these craft are just really, really big, like my mining craft and uh, the space station right now, it it's really tough to kind of line it up. And it's been hard to see my approaches and stuff, but I won't, I won't do the green screen thing to you guys anymore. I will essentially, you know, I'll, I'll just uh, try to make sure we're in the daylight. Anyways, got to... Align my plane with Minmus Station and get caught up with it. And we are rapidly approaching that 15 minute marker. So this is going to be a huge multi-episode, big, big, big mission. And I really hope that you guys enjoy it because I will most certainly have fun doing this. This is gonna be insane compared to pretty much anything I've done in Kerbal Space Program to date, uh, as far as I'm concerned. This is, this craft is crazy. And you can see the craft is so crazy 
that uh, it's bogging down my machine. You can see that uh, I'm not have I don't have a green clock. I have a yellow clock. So anytime I'm flying this craft, my machine's working. It's working. The fans are going. Yeah, because it's such a beast. But it had to be because that's you know the the pretty much the way the LVNs are now. That's that's how you have to do it. All right, about to ditch that tank, so I am not being wasteful, because I would probably get that in the comments, and I'm transferring the oxidizer into my bigger tanks. I'll probably use that for fuel cells. Anyways, that's it for this one, guys. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.